I am here in Las Vegas at Adobe Summit with Adobe CEO Shantanu Narayan. Shantanu, thanks for sitting down with us exclusively here on Overtime. I appreciate you being here, John. Well, I want to start off with the news that you just posted on the investor relations site, the new total addressable market figure for the overall business at $293 billion. In 2021, you said in 2024, the TAM would be $205 billion. So the 2027 target is that how much of that 42% increase over this year is AI? Well, all three uh, initiatives that we are focused on, John, are growing. So when you think about what's happening with creative, when you think about what's happening with documents, and you know the reason we're here this week at Summit. So all three of them are growing. Certainly, we believe, to your question, AI is a massive tailwind uh, in each one of those businesses, both with respect to attracting a whole new set of customers, as well as the ability to have additional value, and therefore, you know, to be able to monetize that. And I think the FA meeting is going to be both about articulating in each one of those businesses where the growth's coming from, as well as, you know, how we expect to continue to focus on innovation. Shantanu, the thing that struck me about the product announcements today was this idea of AI at scale and AI within enterprise workflows. Uh, early on, you guys did this demo of say a company like Coke, a beverage company, they have a bunch of different colors and bottles that they want to put on different backgrounds, trained on their own assets and data. It generated these backgrounds, generated kind of customized different colors, and then resized them based on different social media sizes that would need to go out and exported that into Adobe Express for a social marketing team to be able to do that. And to me, that's way different from saying, hey, draw me an elephant. What's this going to do? Well, there's so many questions in that, John. But, you know, first, if you take a step back out, uh, it's hard not to, when you talk about scale, uh -huh. realize that Adobe pioneered the digital marketing business. We talked about customer experience management. And that business is on scale to drive over $5 billion in revenue for Adobe in 2024. So, you know, we have come a really long way. And, you know, again, from a scale, we process something like 17 trillion customer activations this year. The announcements uh, to your question. What we talked about was Gen Studio. And it doesn't matter whether you're a marketing uh, professional, it doesn't matter whether you're an agency. You are now bombarded with this need for a campaign to be able to conceive it quickly, to be able to create the assets, to be able to deploy it, and to be able to activate it. And to do that in a personalized way. So if you have 100 million customers, you want to use AI to generate 100 million variations of that. If you're in 150 countries, you have to localize that content and therefore, you know, have that content with all the variations. And so the Gen Studio product enables you to do that. We're thrilled that Coke allowed us to actually use, uh, you know, the assets that they had done in the production. Okay, those but are actual Coke assets. Those are actually Coke okay. assets. And what they do is they have this campaign that they want to run but they have to run it on all the different social media platforms. They have to run it in different countries. And the scale at which we can now deploy that for them is where the magic is coming in. And it's coming in through AI, because you can do AI on the front end as it relates to the ideation, mm -hmm. and you can do AI as it relates to understanding the personalities of every single individual and tailoring the content for them. The flip side of this capability is it seems very disruptive to the creative workforce and, and operations chain because before you had agencies there generating these visual assets and maybe just a dozen of them. Now you've got AI generating hundreds or thousands of assets. It, it seems to me you need an agency to A-B test those and figure out what's going to perform best in all these different settings. Is, it a, is there a skill shift that needs to happen within the creative community because of this? Well, you're absolutely right in that it's bringing art and science together. And so if you're the creative professional or if you're the agency, you love AI because it allows you to take something that's in your head and very, very quickly translate that into a, you know, sometimes it's called a hero asset that you then want to create the variations for. Uh, if you're a person who's actually responsible for deploying that, you also love this technology because the pace at which you can deploy this is dramatically different. In the past, what would happen, John, is if you had a campaign that you knew you were going to run around Thanksgiving time, you would start the asset production perhaps in April or in May. Mm. And you would say, you know, how many different segments do I have? How do I create all of this content? And you didn't have the ability in real time, 
if that promotion or if that campaign was not performing to change the assets. Okay. So by combining not just the content creation process, but the delivery and the insight, we can actually in real time to your question, say, you know, this asset's not performing. So maybe we should stop running that asset. And conversely, this asset is off the charts. So why not we have that everywhere? So Shantanu, bring this home for me for investors. Uh, after earnings, there was some question, concern about how quickly you're going to monetize this. Are you going to spend several quarters getting users used to these AI tokens and, and using them before really saying, okay, now it's going to cost you extra? When are, are these innovations going to show up for the top and then eventually bottom line? Uh, you're absolutely right, John, and I think that's the purpose of the FA meeting today, which is to actually break it up into three parts. The first part is, again, to outline all of the innovation that we've done. I could not be more proud. When you think of what our team has done, whether it's AI Assistant and Acrobat and Reader, which is taking all the PDFs that you have and the ability to have a conversational interface across our creative. We announced a new uh, structure match for Firefly today, which again, you know, social media is a buzz with all of the cool creative things that are being done, as well as the document uh, and experience cloud. So the first phase of it is talking about the innovation. I think the second phase is to actually articulate to your point the different monetization methods. Because in creative, we have these generative credits that people can use. The generative credits will be different for imaging as it relates to video. Mm -hmm. Because when you create video, you're going to use a lot more compute. So I think outlining in phase two exactly how we are monetizing it is the second phase of it. In okay. Acrobat, it's different. Whether you're in reader, you can now monetize consumption. And in Experience Cloud, we have these higher-end AI services and the AI assistant. So that's phase two. And then phase three is talking about, as we did with our TAM, how we expect it. I think most people would say it's early in the monetization phase, but the first phase for us was actually making sure that we innovate and get our products out there. And, okay. you know, we're confident that it will lead to new customer acquisition as well as increased revenue.